so I am in the car driving home from seeing Noah and I thought now might be a good time to do an update. I have a new camera holder thingy and a new car. It's not my car. It's Rich's car. Um, we needed to get a new one because our um, Saturn was done. It was just, it was time. It was time that it went into retirement. So anyways, um, I just wanted to quick update you on Noah and let you guys know, um, actually the last few weeks he has been doing amazingly well. Um, there's not any real like reason why he's doing well. Like there's nothing that's going on. Sorry. I'm like trying to stop myself from having the hiccups. Um, there's not really anything that's going on that's like been a big change. It's just, this is kind of what he does. He kind of goes through these periods where he does really well um, for the most part. I mean, it's still, it's still a huge struggle. It's like when we say that he's doing well compared to other kids his age, obviously his behaviors are still like way, way, way um, more significant. But, um, overall he's doing, he's, he hasn't a walled lately. He hasn't done, um, anything, you know, major or dangerous. His tantrums have been pretty, pretty minimal. Um, so this is great and it's always good, you know, to hear that. And it's, it's, uh, it's hard <laughs> for us to hear from the people that care for him, like, oh, we're seeing this um, progress and this these improvements and he's doing so well. And, you know, I think we're really like, you know, going through a breakthrough and we're making these strides. And, you know, for us, we've been dealing with this since he was little, little, little. And so we know that this is what happens. Like he does well. Um, for a period of time and then something happens and he tends to um, regress or just kind of go through this this uh, dip and it's usually pretty extreme and I'm half anticipating that something's about to hit the fan pretty soon because school just let out so it's summertime and you know it's not that that consistent daily routine it's a different routine. And so I know it's going to be a little bit harder for him. So definitely we'll see, you know, if, um, if they start to see an increase in his behaviors, but so it's, you know, like I was talking to his, his therapist for quite a while yesterday and I was explaining to him like, yes, we're seeing progress. Yes. We're excited, blah, blah, blah. But you know, this, this isn't something to, like it's definitely something to celebrate and we want to we want to celebrate it and live in the moment and be happy for it and grateful for it that that this is what it's like right now but this isn't indicative of what the future is going to look like you know and so it's hard when those expectations are there for us to be like okay he's doing better so you know now there's greater expectations on him to keep it together because we see that he can and it's, it's just a misunderstanding of his disability. And so it's very frustrating for us. And, you know, when I was talking to a therapist, I was like, um, explaining to him how he's come home many times before and how every time, you know, everybody, you know, was like, well, be positive because you never know it. This could be the time where everything goes good and everything is fine and you know you have all these services so it's gonna be fine and and I was explaining this to him and he's like well it sounds like you're kind of scared that you know that maybe it it you won't have success again and that's like yeah, yeah no I, I'm not afraid that we're not gonna have success I'm afraid that somebody's gonna get hurt and you know it's like they just don't see it. They just see, 
you know, I don't know. They just see him as another troubled child. They don't see him for his disability. And every time I offer to send any of the professionals that work with Noah, um, not, not any of them, because there are some that are very receptive and very, have been very, um, very strong advocates for him and see what we're talking about. And, and that's awesome. But there are many, many times when I have said, Hey, can I send you some information on FASD and things that work and things that don't work with these kids and their brains and da 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 da, da. And usually I get, well, yeah, sure. But you know, like I've been working with children for this many years, you know, I see this all the time. Basically they know, you know, they know more than I do. And I'm just one of those mothers who's trying to make a million excuses for my kid. And so that gets old really fast. And we have been dealing with that for so many years. And you know, that's just kind of how it's always going to be. And it's hard because I've gotten to the place where I've accepted the fact that this is this is Noah like this is what his life is gonna look like and yet we still have people telling us you just you don't know what the future is gonna hold you don't know what he's gonna be capable of in five or ten years and yes that's true but it's not like he's gonna wake up one morning and his brain is gonna be healed and all the damage from his birth mother's alcohol addiction and drug use is going to magically go away and his brain is gonna grow all the things that it never grew in the first place you know it's not about connections it's about things that are just not there and so I think that's what's frustrating for us too is that people are always like don't be don't be so negative you have to think of the positive and think of you know of you know he may be able to live on his own someday no he's not <laughs> that's never gonna happen and you know, that's what's frustrating for us is because we have seen this pattern since he was, I keep saying that, I keep saying that's what's frustrating, but it is very frustrating. But we've seen this pattern since he was, you know, three, two, three years old and every school year and every new therapist and every new um, placement or situation that he's been in, it's like, there's always this, we're going to go into it optimistic. We're going to, you know, get him to a place where he's stable and it's going to be good. And you just need to get the tools and he just needs to get the tools to be able to, you know, manage his anger, manage his frustration. And it's like, he has all of those tools. He just doesn't know how to access them in the moment. So I kind of lost it. Not really lost it because I don't, usually lose it in situations where you know it's like a professional setting but during an IEP a few months ago I remember his therapist from school at the time was like you know I'm really working on Noah you know with his coping skills and we're just really trying to teach him coping skills Noah has heard and been able to recite all of the coping skills that you could possibly imagine since he was like three years old like he can tell you every coping skill in the book he can tell you okay i can breathe i can count to 10 i can punch a pillow i can you know he will go down the list but that he can't access that in the moment you know he can't he can't get to that stored information in his brain when he is in distress and so it's not a matter of just giving him those tools he has those tools he just can't always access them and so the approach that is often taken with kids like Noah is just so it's just so not effective and it causes more I think anxiety and frustration in these kids than it than it helps you know and so I don't know. I'm totally rambling again, but that is kind of where we're at. Um, we're kind of stressed too, not kind of, we're really stressed because 
we found out that um, we have to apply for SSI for NOAA and we we have to do that um, like immediately and that's a really long horrible grueling process if anybody has ever applied for SSI before um, because but by doing that we're basically going to be giving up our AAP money so we get an adoption assistance payment every month that's not very big but it helps to offset the cost of like gas of going to see Noah and you know food and you know stuff that we do with him and places we take him stuff like that and so that's been really helpful well once we apply for SSI that's basically gonna go away and anything he gets from SSI is gonna go to regional center to help pay for his placement um, and in addition to that, we had to send in this big financial form um, to um, DDS, the Department of Developmental Services for the state of California, to, to see if we were gonna be responsible for a share of cost for his stay. That's on top of having to give them all of his social security. So we're like, <laughs> come on we don't have to thankfully we don't have to give them a portion um, because with all our kids and everything they took pity on us and we are actually like way below the poverty line according to them so yay us um, so that's one good piece of news but it's just gonna be a huge bummer as far as the SSI um, and let me see what or something else I was going to say about that about applying for the benefits but now I don't remember what it is I don't know anyways so it's just it's oh and they're switching him from the regional center that he was at to Orange County Regional Center um, and even though all of the regional centers are supposed to follow the same sorry I know it's bumpy follow the same um, their IPP, which is like an IEP, so it's an individual plan, um, but not all of the um, reach, or, yeah, not all the regional centers have the same services or offer the same services. So it gets really sticky legally. So then we have the um, the attorney that's been helping us with that, kind of advocating for us. But even then, it's still. They get away with a lot. They get away with a lot of, with how, they know the loopholes like the regional centers do. And because the funding is so, is just, you know, so sparse as it is. And I don't know what's gonna happen now, um, you know, with the new budget, what it's gonna look like. And so that's kind of scary too. So those, you know, the services that he, is getting right now even though he's supposed to continue to get them when he goes when it switches over to the other regional center it most likely won't like they already told us we don't do in-home respite care um, they just don't do it and so behavioral respite so therefore like if we want Noah to come home for visits we really need somebody in our home to help and they're like well sorry can't do it we don't we don't offer that and so yeah you know, it's just all of this stuff added together that just makes things super duper 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 difficult. But I will end on a good note. I got Noah's report card um, and he got all A's except for PE. He got a B minus, I think. But he got all A's in all of his subjects. So um, granted, he's in seventh grade and he's working at about a kinder to first grade level academically, but I'm very proud of him that he got such good grades. And so um, 